What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Having Said That Show. I'm your co-host, Adi, alongside Jay. What's up, guys? And today, guys, I want to start the episode with a little bit of a story. Obviously, we had a different kind of intro role today. And that video, guys, was made exactly three years ago. Mm. That was the first episode of the Having Said That Show. This was back when Sid and I just started making these videos in, in like a bedroom. And um, never would I have imagined that it would have gotten to a point where we have eight people in the room right now as part of the crew. We've met some of the most talented people in the country just on this couch, bro. And I mean, the only Tej was on this couch. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we've gotten the chance to work with some of the coolest brands. Yeah. And if you guys notice in that video super carefully, the bag of beans that falls is actually a blue trick eye bag of beans. Yeah. And we haven't spoken about this uh, with you guys yet. Jay, why don't you tell them, dude? Man, the last three weeks have been pretty, pretty wild, man, for all of us, actually. We uh, we did the dating episode. We went to Homegrown. Obviously, yeah. we'll get into all of that later. But one of the biggest things that happened to us over the last three weeks was that Blue Dekai and us have formed, like, a partnership. Yeah, we started working is, in collaboration uh, with yeah. them. Which is crazy, bro, because I remember, like old hsd we used to have like the cups and stuff and still, like you guys remember i used to like block out the logo with the <laughs> with now the we always show them love as well no, we always show them love but up to a point you know uh, <laughs> yeah no that was that was really cool man I, as a creator it's super rare that when you try to work with brands and stuff that they're open and like transparent and honest with you I know I wasn't like the biggest musician when I tried to work with them, when I tried to get them to come to a show of mine, to do like a pop-up and stuff. But they were always so like receptive mm -hmm. and they would hear me out, like give me feedback and stuff like that. And that meant a lot to me as just someone who was trying to learn. And even now it means a lot. And going off of that, we thought the best way to like kind of put that message out there is by introducing a new segment to our show called HST Unfiltered. And I'm fucking excited for this because I've been wanting to do it for a while. Yep. And Jay, why don't you explain to them what it is while I set up a French press for all of us. <laughs> but wait, we okay. need water boiling already, bro. Okay, it's boiling? Is it not boiling? It's not boiling, Sid. It's not boiling, don't bring it, bro. Okay, guys, so this segment is, like Aditya said, HSD unfiltered, um, where the coffee is filtered, but the conversation is not. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So, like, here at HSD, we've taken you through, like, the highs of our friendship. And I think the show focuses on fun a lot. And, obviously, we love hanging out together. We love each other. But um, an essential part of any friendship is, obviously, the hard times as well, right? you got to be there through the good and the bad. So, in this segment, we're going to dive into a couple of more emotional topics and uh, get to know you boys on a different level. Like you said, bro, like boys groups. I mean, me and you have shared yeah. these conversations a bunch and I feel like they've been very instrumental in our friendship lasting as long as it has. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a couple of conversations without which we probably wouldn't be as close yeah, as no, we are. that's true, that's true. I think the, the basis of this show also hinges on the fact that we can be as honest with each other as possible because i won't take it the wrong way you won't take it i mean it your beard's been looking a little I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> no go ahead go ahead no but it is it is kind of these conversations that we all know that boys groups have like i'm sure like you guys with your best friends you have those sit down conversations that essentially like make the friendship you know what i mean like it's not always like fun and laughs and jokes and stuff so we want to get into that side a little more today we want to show you some depth to our conversations. I feel like let's just get into it and I'm I'm sorry if this is a little meta for you guys but I was in charge of like bringing the conversation of topic today. I gave you guys a heads up but something that I was thinking of when we just came up with the segment is why don't boys have these conversations in the first place? You know what I mean? And when I was reflecting on it um, I was like I never had those conversations with men in my life, period. Mm. Like, whether it was my dad, whether it was my brother. I just, I felt uncomfortable talking to them about it. And um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Like, why don't, why do you guys think that that happens in the first place? Well, first of all, I want to say that if you are friends with someone for like a meaningful amount of time, it can't be like a surface level relationship, right? Like, you're not always going to see the best and brightest and happiest version of that person. And eventually you're going to be like, yo, what's up? What's bothering you? You know? So I do think these conversations happen, 
but I feel like they're super like scarce. Like they don't happen or often deep enough. Into the friendship. Yeah, they don't happen. They don't happen often enough. Um, I just think it's it's just not something dudes are encouraged to do usually is talk about their feelings in like a healthy way because mm. it does make you seem like kind of weak. Oh, if I go to like Aman with my problems and I tell him all the shit that's like bugging me and that's on my mind, uh, he might think that, you know, like I can't handle life as well and like, you know, I'm weak or whatever. But the more and more you have these conversations with your friends, with your good friends specifically, I'm not saying go and tell everyone your problems. Nobody, nobody wants that. But, <laughs> but the more you realize that they are your friends for a reason. They only want the best for you. Mm. That's easy, right? Like, I know my dad would love to mm. care for me, mm. Mm. but it doesn't make it easier for me to go and talk to him about this yep. stuff. Yep. Like, that's not the issue here. With dads specifically, there's a little bit of a generation gap, like you said, right? I feel like with friend groups in general, it's different because you're like kind of going through life together, essentially. So it is easier to talk to the boys about it. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to weigh in on the, on the dad point that you said because we've obviously, me and Adi have grown up together and at one point we were living in the same house. Mm. Like his parents, my parents, everybody. So I don't know if you remember this, Adi, but as kids, <clears throat> we would be at home, whatever. I mean, I'm like 12, 13 or so, you're five, six years younger than me. We'd be playing around doing whatever we were doing in the hall. Whenever our dads would come back from work, <clears throat> okay, like we know that yeah. the bell has rang and they've come and everyone just cleans up and becomes yeah. all proper and then yeah. you, you know, the TV goes off, the toys are like chucked in a corner. And it was a very formal thing. Like, yeah. maybe th you know, that just sort of leads up to what you said that mm. we had this very formal, like when they've come to be well behaved. You know? Yeah, damn, I don't even, I forgot about that. I yeah, completely right? fucking But you remember we used to do that. Yeah. The whole house used to do that. Yeah. That's wild. Did I, you I do that? Relate, yeah, 100%, dude. I can relate to that as well because like, you know, you're, you're at home, you're causing havoc and shit and you're just like yeah. fucking around, trying wrestling moves and shit and then like when dad comes home, it's like, okay, now relax a little bit, behave, you know. Yeah. That is, I mean, it is a thing because like, you know, they've had a long day and that, you know, even your mom kind of tells you, like, okay, dad's home now. Just relax a little bit. But what do you think, Aman? I think, you know, for you, it's like, yeah, obviously, I'll go talk to my boys. Like, if I see someone down, like, I want to help them, right? But a lot of friend groups, as, like, a boys group, like, you go out, you drink, whatever, you have fun, and you really sort of just exist, right? And, like, a lot of these conversations aren't had. And same thing with dads, and that's what I want to get to, which is, for me, it was very normal. But I think, you know, the older I got, I realized it was sort of away from the norm sort of relationship with my dad which is like how many people really like on a daily basis will tell their dad oh hey I love you it was always created as this sense of like fear right like mm -hmm. your dad is someone to be mm -hmm. feared mm -hmm. and I never felt that way with my dad like bro th this thing about the toys yeah we would clean up but like my dad would come home and I would still be playing with my toys one of my earliest memories um, when I was like three or whatever my dad came home from a trip and he had bought me a Barbie I don't know. I think I'd asked for a Barbie and he had bought me a Barbie. No okay. questions asked. <laughs> that seems like, yo, this is exactly what we're trying to fight, bro. I'm on play with your fucking Barbies, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's my, no, the reason I brought this, <laughs> the reason I bring this up is, look, I was given that opportunity to see if that's what I wanted, right? And the Barbie was always a traditionally yeah. girly thing. Yeah, yeah. I got the Barbie at three, by three and a half, I had bitten the Barbie's head off. Like, for me, it was just <laughs> yeah. Right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like... That. That, I was like, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's what it was, right? I, I think, even with, like, the whole love you thing, it's all, in my family, that was always just a normal thing we did. Yeah. And that's my thing. Is like, is, is that something you'll do? Do you tell your dad you love them? Yeah, occasionally, and I agree with you, it is like a generational shift because we actually are you know, taught and told that it's okay to discuss your emotions and it's okay to kind of like be When honorable. have you told your dad you love him? Like you tell him occasionally? I, mean, I, t I tell him occasionally that I love him. That's cool, bro. Yeah, I mean... I think I only said it when I left for college. Like, that's <laughs> oh, I mean, no, I tell him occasionally that I, yeah, that I, I love I, him. Yeah, sure, too. for sure. Every um, time my dad gets on a flight, I'll, we, I send a safe flight, love you message. Oh, yeah, I mean... That's, yeah. Yeah. No, but no, they, that's awesome. they were also like, raised in a generation where it was not acceptable. Well, not, not acceptable, but it was just not a factor. It was yeah. just not spoken about. It was just not not something that they even considered, right? So for you to approach them knowing that they have this kind of thing in their head of like, really, you're coming to me with your problems and not solving them yourself is like one of those barriers that still exists, right? Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, it is super hard to bridge that gap. But I feel like now, as our generation is getting older, we can start to affect change 
in our parents, right? And that generation. Because we're not like 17, 18 anymore. We're like, you're almost 25, right? I'm almost 24. Mm. So they do take us seriously or at least more seriously to some extent to where it's like, if you want to have an op- like a more open relationship with them, I feel like it's on you now to initiate that. I, I also think a huge factor is like, both of us went to college for four years. Aman did as well. And you go during like the most, um, during the period where you're changing the most exponentially. Yeah. And you come back and your parents don't see that entire change, right? Yeah. And your family will always kind of want you to behave the way you've been. So even if like you, you've changed over these four years so much, you come back, it, it's very hard to like, put that change to them mm. and them just accept it off the bat. Yeah. Like it has to be gradual, I think. You do grow up a lot in college and you do mature in college and then the second you come home, you act like you, you're like, yeah. you know, sometimes that happened to me sometimes. You fall like, back, it, yeah, yeah. You fall back into like that daily routine or whatever. Like you don't have class. You're essentially on holiday. Yeah. You're just like sleeping until 12 and your parents are just like, see, he's just he's sleeping. He's the his, same. He's sleeping yeah. until 12, man. This, this <laughs> fucking guy, you know? So it is, it is a thing of like, you wanting them to notice the change, yeah. but it has to happen gradually, bro. I just want to ask um, Ariana if you're comfortable with it. Is is your relationship with your dad like far different from what you're hearing from us? I think it's easier because I'm a girl mm-hmm. and I feel like people expect me to be emotional. So mm-hmm. I say I love you to my parents all the time. Yeah, But I feel like from my dad's perspective, I think there is like a block where maybe from his side, it's like, oh, I don't know how much I can express myself with my yeah daughter. yeah yeah and I sure, think sure. so I think with you guys as well it's like a two-sided thing right it really depends on your personality now right because like you said we were gone for a lot of years so it's like have you come back more emotionally mature are you ready to have that conversation and it's going to be an uncomfortable one with your parents or like your peers or whatever have you guys seen the KSI documentary <laughs> no this created a big discourse on Twitter because he basically did this trying thing. Trying to talk emotions, I'm just trying to bring up KSI. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't get it. He made, he did this part of his documentary. A lot of it was like his relationship with his family that has been like publicly a little turbulent. And he sort of goes to his dad on camera and says, look, um, when I was five or whatever, you guys used to hit me or like, you know, your version of discipline was like quite harsh and we never said love you. And, and I grew up sort of Thank you, man. I don't feel like I truly know you. And he got a lot of shit for it on Twitter. Yeah. Saying like, oh, just be grateful. Like, how can you even ask for that from your parent? Yeah, yeah. And he now claims that his relationship is like 10,000 times better. Now he like chills with his dad. Like he's gotten to know his dad. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to ask you guys, which is like, I think we spent a lot of time in this conversation talking about the stigma and the problem around it. Mm -hmm. But personally for you, what is that experience with your father and what do you want it to be? I'll, I'll take this one first. I feel like, and I think you guys will agree with me as well, some of the toughness mm. or like the perceived emotional stoicism comes from a place of, I don't know, wanting you to constantly succeed and push your boundaries and, you know, constantly do better and be better. And it's like, you know, even though you did a good job, okay, on to the next one, on to the next one. And I think for them, that is a way of passively nudging you in the right direction. Because they do, like, ultimately, for a dad, what you want is for your son to be more successful than you, yeah. right? So I think that is their way of giving you, like, like a harder time with themselves so that, yeah. you know, you expect them to expect more of you so you perform to that level. You know what I'm saying? I do. Like it, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm sure they're proud of us, guys. Like, I'm sure, like, they think that. Whether they emote it or not, yeah. that's a different thing. But this is kind of their way of ensuring that the cycle keeps continuing. Because, look, I'll be very honest with you. What happens when someone tells you, hey, great job, hey, good job, hey, really good, really good, really good. You get complacent. You're like, wow, you know, I, I really, I did a great job today. I shot this much. I did these many episodes and HST's done, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now what? Hmm. Right, the conversation is always now what everything is building to something else. Whenever you achieve a goal, there's a next goal and there's a next goal. So I think that is kind of integrated into our relationship with our dads, where it's like not always so forthcoming hmm. because they want you to keep doing better. I don't know if I agree with you on that. I don't think it is helpful always. I think it depends on person to person for yeah, sure. sure. There's a lot of people out there who 
sometimes want to hear it it's not complacency it's acknowledgement to push you on it's you know what i'm proud of you and i'll continue being proud of you i think a lot of it is like a realization of who your dad is in the 45 to 50 years that he's lived and how you can't expect that to just change suddenly okay so i'll give you an example yeah um i realized this recently growing up um i had no f- similar interest to my dad at all like he f- loved engineering and shit and i was completely on like the art side right and i was like oh f- like whatever my brother relates to him or i don't really do that side of stuff i relate to my mom and like <clears throat> if i look closely and said you know this like whenever we had a family gathering my dad is like the center of attention he is the storyteller he is like telling jokes he wants to like make people happy or like he you know whether that's playing music or like just i don't know whatever it is and i think that my form of relating to him or realizing that okay this is where i get my side of his relatability from was just realizing it it was just like oh fuck like i do the same shit mm. it's just on a different scale yeah like or just in in professionally Yeah, it doesn't have to be f- professionally, right? Like yeah. You can, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. So what you said is what I wanted to talk about, actually. And I am close to my family, I'm close to my father. And I've also always clashed with my father. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I was, a, I am a stubborn person, but I was a stubborn kid as well. And it was like, I was, like, I would all, I was, I was the argumentative kid, right? I was like, the why kid. No, I'm not going to do that. Like <laughs> yeah. the one thing I've realized and this gets a bit cheesy but I've always been told I look like my dad like people have come up to me saying oh my god I used to hail son because you look exactly like him not knowing who I am. Um my dad is a lawyer so different from me but also he was in he used to do theater acting. He loves food, he loves reading. So a lot of my interests are similar to my dad. Um and that's also part of the reason I think we clash so much. Yeah. And I sort of a lot of this realization and a lot of this for me and I'm still wrestling with it like even till today when I fight with my parents is like and how like the the way they've interacted in life the way their relationship has been has has affected me and my relationships and the good parts and the bad parts and the mistakes I make and at the end of the day you sort of get up and you know as a kid you think your dad's this like superhero or he's this like tyrant or all these things and you grow older and you realize your dad is just you mm. in a way and it's like looking at this like time machine or a mirror and you look you just he's figuring it out just like i'm yeah. figuring it out and just like we're going to figure it out and sometimes that doesn't work because sometimes two versions of you don't gel and then mm-hmm. sometimes it works perfectly and i look at my relationship with my girlfriend right now and i look at my parents relationship and everything whatever like just what i saw growing up and i can see similar patterns already because that's what i know that is my idea of like a good healthy relationship both the good and the bad you know what i mean yeah this is a little off topic but um have you guys seen a quiet place i'll bring it back 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 relax <laughs> You guys seen a quiet place? I I don't like horror, but I know the movie. Me neither, but you seen John Krasinski? Anyone? Seen it. Anyone has seen? You seen? Okay. <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> yeah, me too. I hate watching horror movies, okay? Like I will literally never in my life choose to watch a horror movie. And this entire movie is about a dad trying to keep his family alive and stuff and the fucking lens that he has to go through to like whatever whatever and he's facing like these alien demons who are like literally like destroyers and stuff and if you make a single sound you're done and whatever whatever i left that movie thinking that the scariest thing was the weight and expectation of being a bell <laughs> like there were some scary ass moments in yeah. that movie there were moments where i was just like oh my god and it was just all overshadowed by what the parents had to do just because they were parents yeah like you know what i mean like that was what i left the movie with i was like oh my god like that shit's tough bro so you know they are just figuring it out like we are you know i mean It's not like they've ever had kids before as well. <laughs> so, I mean, this is like the practice test final everything. Yeah. You know, I guess to give them a little leeway is also fair because I'm the f- I'm the first child. Yeah. So, so are you. So are you? No. no. Are you? No. Okay. So like so like, you know, 
you kind of have to give them a little bit of leeway because they've literally never done this before. Yeah. At least in my case, like mm. literally has never been done before. So, you know, I guess they are just navigating. Yeah, they did fuck up with you and like, so <laughs> I did <didn't> that. <do> <laughs> no, but um, I, I had a thought from the beginning of uh, when you asked the question right at the beginning and we went down this thing of your relationship with your parents and everything. And yeah, that could be one reason why we are like this. Personally for me and tell me if you guys relate to this, I am also like that. I don't talk too much about what's bothering me or about my or about stuff because I don't feel like giving that obligation to the listener. Mm. And I know this is this may not be the right way to look at things, mm. but Adi, it's okay. For example, you, I, I can tell you anything. You know, you're very, very really close. But I still feel like, yeah, dude. I mean, Adi has his own shit going on. And where I'm going to bother him with my life and with my problems? And I feel very obligated to like take even an hour of yours to for you to help me solve my problem so let me make it clear while we're fucking live you can tell me yeah, anything at no. any <laughs> no, 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 i'm saying i'm saying people yeah, don't yeah, make yeah, that clear yeah. sometimes and yeah, like yeah. it doesn't matter if i have a hundred things going yeah. on if it's like your if it's a problem that affects you so much bro talk no, i know i know i can tell you and i know but it's just that something in me it's not you it's anybody with my sister with my with whoever I don't know. I just feel like I don't want to give an obligation to the other person. My way of comforting you right now is to tell you that most people think like this. Hmm. Think like they want you to tell them. Your sister, your mom, whoever it is you're struggling to tell or hmm. even have that second thought, don't have it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of like a, a half friendship if you don't kind of take the bad stuff as well, right? Yeah. It's like you want your friends to succeed and you want them to do good. And it's not, I mean, you don't have to kind of be happy and bubbly and like, you know, in one mood all the time. Yeah, I, so, I know it's something I need to improve yeah, yeah. and work upon, but like, I'm just like he that said, that everyone feels that an way. answer to why we don't talk much. Sure. Because yeah. I feel yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys relate to that, if you all feel yeah. the same or not. I Yeah, I definitely used to. I <laughs> definitely used to. <laughs> I find it easier to have people around me that I don't have to ask this question to. As in, uh, yeah. like, to myself. Like, I, I feel like, um, with Aditya, for example, we can just be doing random shit like we can be at the end of a workout mm. and then like while we're doing like abs or something we'll just like randomly get into life and like what is bothering us and i don't even really think twice too much yeah, it about makes it. the minute plank so much harder <laughs> yeah. you fucking yapping in my no head. like i'll be like like you know like i'll be like on the side i'll be like yeah no so like i was just dealing with this today and he's just like uh-huh uh-huh like, it's <laughs> fucking that's so sad i can't believe that happened to you bro <laughs> so like it's it's almost easier to curate your friends in a way that doesn't make curate you question. No, like yeah, you what, do curate, what, you curate your fucking friends, curate bro. Your friends, bro. Like, yeah, no, like it's it's almost easier for you to remove that doubt process by not even having it in the first place. You're like, is this dude like someone that I can lean on long term? You figure that out eventually, yeah. and then you'd be like, okay, cool, friendship yeah. started. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, it's just it's easier, and obviously you have acquaintances and you have people who you aren't that tight with, and you need that shit as well. You need like the fun shit as well. Sorry, just his point. I think what he's saying is not that like he doesn't feel like his friends would be there for him. Like you know that yeah, Adi would be there for you, right? Yeah, it's just it's a matter of like he doesn't think that their time is worth his problems. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Or his problem isn't big enough for yeah, that. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying. You have to curate your friends in a way that you shouldn't even need to ask that question. Like your problems he's, are my problems. But he's not. He's. But dude, I, here's the thing. My, my friend. I know my friends are. I've mm. curated them correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It's nothing to do with them. It's got to do with me internally. I need to yeah. be like, you know, you. It's okay. You can go and talk yeah. to someone. Well, you're from. You're from the old. Yeah, man. I'm it's gonna, time, you know, it's gonna take you some. Uh, man carries a stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just drop some dirt in your wound and fucking carry on. <laughs> What's interesting, and I want to ask you guys this as well, that expe- that Jay brought up mm. earlier. Um. So well, the expectation of being a parent. Yeah. And what kind of father you wanna be or mother? you want to be it's a small version of me it's mm. my someone i want to do better than me my future my legacy all everything right my seed <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> i hate that word bro. yeah i know right it's like okay go you for it your, your, the next of kin bro. My, you know what, in the I sense mean, that like anything bro you can even say progeny it wouldn't even matter <laughs> it's like it's crazy to think how much we carry bro as yeah. people like all my ancestors yeah and it's me yeah just for you to 
wind up listening to Taylor Swift all day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many people had to meet in this exact <laughs> same place? You know, I was thinking. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, these you guys, no, 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 no. These no, guys no. are missing out. Taylor speaks to everyone. But what I was gonna say also is, um, to get here, my, yeah. my family, whatever, my ancestors were killed people and fought in wars. And literally, like, you take off my glasses and you put me on a mountain, I'm dead. <laughs> like, I'm not living. I can't see. I'm blind. I can't breathe. Like, are you kidding? You give me milk. I'm like on the floor for six hours. Like, what are you fucking talking about? How did they get here, bro? <laughs> yeah, you, bro, you give me too much milk, I'm out. Shout out the cold brew. Bro. Yeah, no shout milk. Out, shout out cold brew. Dude. No shout milk, dairy bro. free. Good for my oh. IBS. Like oh I'm God. done. That was I, a great tie in, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was fantastic. No, sorry. I, like, based on your parents, based on your decision with your father, what do you want from your kids? Ba- who do I want to be to my kids? Yes, sir. Oh my God, what a loaded question, dude. Be honest, uh, dependable, probably. Because I'm still figuring my own life out right now. So I don't know what exactly I want to be. But you want to be someone who is dependable enough to lean on in any situation. You know what I mean? You have a problem, call dad. You have this, call dad. You have yeah. this issue, call dad. So like the person I want to be, I'm still figuring out. However, it's very easy for me to say that a nice blueprint for being a parent is just being there. And being dependable, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I, I like don't. The, you know, you don't want to be perceived as like judgy. Like I don't want to yeah, yeah, judge yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Like if you get in trouble or some shit, you're yeah. Like, Fuck, I gotta call my dad instead of like, let's call my dad. He can help yeah, us. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? And the punishment comes later, of course. But uh, <laughs> like you know, in the moment, you don't you don't want to have that like barrier of like shit. I'm gonna get fucked up. Like you want to be like, yeah. okay, solve the problem first. Lesson later than life. You know what I mean? That's one thing for me. Like I, I told you guys, I started drinking really late. Yeah. And it's because like. Alcohol was never taboo for me. Like, mm. if I was... I mean, my parents weren't letting me <laughs> drinking. <laughs> we used to fucking drink at 13 years old. Oh, my God. Like, I had a... They would, like, I would have a sip of my mom's drink and I hated it. And so yeah. in my head, I was like, oh, this shit is gross, bro. I don't want to drink. Yeah. And there was never that fear. Like, even with smoking, my parents told me, when you're 18, if you want to smoke, we'll have a cig with you. My parents don't smoke. But they were like, mm. that's what our parents did for us. We'll have a cig with you. I got to 18. I chose not to have the cig with them. And I've, I've never smoked in my life. And that's who I want to be. My next question is: the What what is who you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand. I want to be I want to be that kind of parent. Like he I wants want to be tobacco free by twenty twenty three. Honestly, yeah, no, I, I don't like. Anyway, I get it. I get it. Like you yeah. want to be approach. You want to be approachable. I want to be right? like that. Like you want to be a vape god. Yeah, that's what you're saying. <laughs> He's like, vape yo, guys. I'm gonna show you how to blow O's like this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't breathe already, bro. I'm not like. Oh man, that's dogs. true. That's true. My question is. Yeah. Will you tell your kids you love them often? Yeah, bro. Come on, relax, I don't know what man. What kind of a fucking kid it is, man? What is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, yeah, for sure, dude. But what do you? You didn't, you didn't answer that question though. What do you want just, your? Sorry. Go I know. I, what go do you want your uh, kids to think of you? Like, you know. In, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. All I'm thinking about is just how much Aman is. busting into the room. <laughs> Grab your vapes, kids, when you're on the road. <laughs> oh, no. I, I love you, son. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry, you were saying? I was saying, like, what, what is your answer to Aman's question? Yeah, just like, I don't want to be perceived as judgy. Like, okay. I just wanna oh, you want to them to beat themselves that. around me. Yeah. That's it. And you want them to kind of figure themselves out around you. Rather than like tiptoe around you, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, they can. I don't think I need to be there for them to figure themselves out. Yeah, yeah. You know hey, hey, dude, that's true, bro. You don't want to. You don't want to. Like, I want to. I want to be, be able to go day. out for a pack of cigarettes and never come back. <laughs> 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 okay, like my kids are smoking with me, bro. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, get out of here. I've some O's with Aman, bro. I've misrepresented my parents. My parents don't smoke. Okay. <laughs> They, this was just like a tactic to not get me to smoke and it worked. <laughs> they don't it smoke, a, they burn, dude. That's, what, that's what's up. Bro. It was an endearing story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I feel you. I feel um, you. But like, you don't want to be a helicopter parent as well. Yeah, absolutely bro. not, like, that's dude. Fucking, yeah, yeah. You ever know that one kid who's just like, oh my God, bro. Like, yeah. you can live life without still being attached to your umbilical cord. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, no, like no, <laughs> you know I'm what I'm sure, saying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you, you want to be dependable, but you don't want them to not be independent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ariana. Yeah, no. I had a question. Sure. Now, based on what... Last question, question of the day. Okay. Okay, it's the last question. Okay. <laughs> I had a question. Basically, based on this, 
what would you do differently than what your parents, how your parents raised you? How would you be different as a parent? I guess the thing that we want to be is that difference. Like, mm, yeah. I when I said I don't want to be judgy, I think that's what I wished my parents were less of or whatever. Oh, my, my parents are pretty but, dependable. I, I, <laughs> that's not what I feel. No, I, yeah, I feel um, like uh, this is a different question, I feel. Um, you want to be less judgy. I want to be... Damn, I don't know. What would I do differently? I mean, fucking great parents. We both have great yeah, parents. Look how we turned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, wait up, <laughs> but, uh, nah. Like, I'll tell you mine. Yeah. My parents are amazing. Love them. Yeah. Shout out to my parents. Shout out, Ariana's parents. <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> but I wish that my parents were so easygoing and they fully supported me in everything I did, okay? Hmm. So my parents are the most supportive parents ever. But that also means that if I wanted to leave something, they were just like, okay, yeah, leave uh, it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes I wish that I don't have any like life skills like playing an instrument or like being really good at a sport because I am I feel like really lazy as a person. And like I just, if I'm not good at something, I just leave it. Okay. So I wish like my parents had been like, no, 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 you have to do this. Mm. Yeah. And so I think I do that. I feel that. That's, that's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. So to that point, I would probably make my child work out like as soon as possible ASAP <laughs> like yeah. one's gonna be on the side blowing over so I'm gonna be on the side like no like as many <laughs> no not even I mean yeah, no, you know workouts don't have to be like with weights or anything yeah. just like just general basic fitness so that they don't like you know also I wanna run some things back I said my parents would Judgy, but like they literally approved of a fucking rap career. No, no, so. yeah, yeah, obviously. obviously. No, we, all had, yeah, yeah. we all had great parents. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, I'll say one last thing. Like, you know, like an open day and shit, like when the teachers finally got their chance to like shit on you for the first time in the semester, uh, I just would just be like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I, I would just be like, it, dude, it's going to be like a couple more years of this and then you're done and you don't have to fucking be with these people anymore. So... Don't be a dickhead, but yeah. just relax. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Calm down. Yeah. That's it. Did your parents make you feel otherwise? No. Not otherwise, but like, I felt like there was too much importance on yeah, that yeah. side, which we'll get into later. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. That's, that's what I want to tell all the kids out there. That like, it's not the end of the world if you get a fucking, like, you know, remember remarks? I mean, I only got the good ones. But the good remarks? Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. <I> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what world are you living in, bro? What? You didn't get a good remark ever? I've literally never gotten a good remark. About, what the fuck is a good remark? Yeah, good remark? I got What's a good, good remark. It's like, no, you want no. Oscars? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it's it's not the end of the world to get a fucking remark. Like, I yeah. remember I got a remark once for like forgetting a book at home. And, like, the only lesson that I learned from that was, fuck, I want to leave my book at home again, bitch. Like, try me, dude. Give me another remark. I don't care. You See, know? he was a stubborn kid like me as well. Yeah, dude. super stubborn. I, yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Um, That was awesome, by yeah, the way. Well, Our first sure. HST Unfiltered. Yeah. Presented by Blue Guy. Thanks for sharing, guys. <laughs> that coffee is hitting right now. Yeah, dude, I was singing and I was like, yeah. Yeah, I want to be dependable. <laughs> <laughs> But I know that Awan and Sid have a segment planned for us that I think will leave us on a higher note. Yeah, this so is let's so old school, into. bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sid hit. No, you go for it. Yeah. Okay. It says news with Sid. Uh, cool, news oh, with Sid. Oh, that's what it is? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. That's what the segment's called. We just christened it right now. <laughs> Aditya and I are a bunch of well-read gentlemen. We're, 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 we're pretty st Cost. studious and yeah. well, Where's my monocle at? Oh, that's hats. <laughs> <laughs> the last one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Communism. <laughs> <what you're> <laughs> Communism. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Very simple segment. Um, Aman and I have done some research and found some like interesting, thought-provoking articles. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read the article headline. And if you want, I'll give you a little bit of gist of what it is about. And just, I want to know what you think. Just react. Like, sure. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, let's see where this goes. Uh, Excited? Movie magic, Rishabh. This is not going to be in the video. No, <laughs> <laughs> now we got to keep it in because you said it. <laughs> Wait, do you want to do his gift yeah, yeah, thing now? Or at, at the end. 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 Yeah. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to read the headline out. Sorry. Cookies, dude, you have to accept them all always. No, <laughs> you, don't you don't have to. Okay, well, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh man, the, does not the Nigerian do prince <laughs> emailed me again <laughs> like this. I, I can't keep giving him money, man. <laughs> okay. 
first one and Adi maybe you can chime in on this <laughs> why can't I chime in on this what the fuck the solution to long distance distance oh. relationships a virtual kissing machine <laughs> Let's go bro. Can you put anything right. in that kissing machine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, you never know who's on the other end of that kissing machine, bro. Like you know like I'll give you just a sense. It's the it's the new age glory hole. Bro. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> Intercontinental like glory holes, dude. Uh, essentially the Chinese have developed this technology of where course. you you have your two phones and you put your phone in this kind of like a holster with a mouth at the end of it. and the other person has the same okay and then you can see it's a video call slash your can you can you program it to be a better kisser <laughs> like you know uh, you, like for you, them here's the thing you feel what the other person is doing on the other end yeah yeah, yeah that's I, what i'm saying i i just want to say big bang theory did it first i know yeah yeah, yeah. my man that's wait is there sound attached to this like can you hear the person say uh, things it's a video call yeah it's, it's a video, video call. call oh it's, it's a, video a video call, call. Yeah, yeah 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 okay so that's a potent question yeah it's a video call with But yeah, the most important is can you put other things there? I'm you know, like sure, I'm if sure you, you want to make them taste like a new blue tikai coffee. Oh, or that's yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no milk, no sugar. You know. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Next one. Okay, this one is a Vice article. Mm. Um, and we want we want your thoughts on this. They always have the best, most um, thought provoking. Yeah, news. Yeah, Inside the secret world of India's adult breastfeeding community. So mm-hmm. thoughts. Oh, that's it. That, that's the that's title. The, that's Those the are the kids you were talking about earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what happens if you coddle your kids, man. They're gonna find someone else to fucking feed on. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the headline below. When I lost my job, I sought refuge in my wife's lactating breasts. I have never felt more secure. That's so some mommy issues right there. Bro. <laughs> We just spent the whole episode talking about daddy issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some <laughs> homelando shit right there, bro. You guys seen that? Guys seen yeah. It? This is a thing on Instagram. Oh, Shut breast up. milk jewelry. No. What? Oh, I saw that. That was on Shark Tank. No. That was on Shark Tank. That was on Shark Tank. I promise you, that was on Shark Tank. Dude, Wait, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, I'm like... talking about it's like an Indian custom in like some villages where before the guy like goes to get married, he has to like. No. Oh, no, 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 be a thing. It's a thing. I mean, it seems pretty. It ugly. was on Instagram. It's a thing. Oh, they was on Instagram. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. there's a video. Oh, there's okay. a video. You saw the video? I saw the video. What are you doing on Instagram? Yeah. Should I send you the video? Yeah. No, so no, no. <laughs> Yo, bro, come on. <laughs> no, no, we got to put that up. No, we got to do that. No, we got to do that. But What? damn, there's like a secret society of do like wait, so like is it is it their wives or is it New mothers. It's like it can the, be both. Yeah, it can be whoever, but it's like this. I guess. I guess it has to be a new mother. No, it has to be a new mother. But yeah. like, why are new mothers just offering it up? No, I think it's their wife. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So some highlights from the article. Unless they got like madras, bro. Straight up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can, if you can convince like, hey, you <laughs> <laughs> to let you breastfeed, bro. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> like, someone said it helps them sleep better. Oh my god dude. Pablo Picasso said that the most beautiful breasts are the ones that give the most milk. Mhm. Um so you know I am I going to ask something? I, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, I'm he's just like super passionate about it. He's like I'm yeah, just yeah. telling you about the article bro. We were talking about Ripen Hose and Sugar Tits bro. <laughs> you know if I ever Okay, dro- hold my vape while I suck on your butt. <laughs> If I ever if I ever drop an album I have my title right there right ripping hose ripping hose, <laughs> ripping hose and sucking tits coming 2024 Okay um, so it's that next post one Lone album is like bongs and bangs yeah, bongs and bangs yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> This is an article body shaming by your parents Essentially it's a very Asian thing of okay. body shame your kids okay. because they look at it as a way of motivating your kids to become better Sure Yeah, that's the that's the head of the article. I mean, in the, the gist of it. Yeah. Okay, well, if your parents aren't gonna tell you the truth, who is? Yeah, I agree with like, that. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, look, body shaming in school and bullying, and they, it can go either way, right? But like, if your parents see you, yeah, they are in charge of you. They are in charge of your health and your well being. They see you getting up there and just be like, hey, man, maybe. I think the body shaming maybe. word is like clickbait, bro. Your yeah. no, none of your parents are bullying you at home. You know, no, they're I'm just so probably good. telling so you, some... yo, you're gaining weight or you're too skinny. But you know what? Like. Here's where it gets annoying, and I feel like this side isn't as represented. It's like when they offer up no solution to it. Hmm. You know, as a parent, you are responsible for your kid, 
you make them exercise more and eat less, bro. Like, what, what are you just going to call them fat? And then their reaction to that is but to they feel don't, guilty Who anymore. does that, bro? I'm sure there's parents out there who, yeah. who are like, oh, you're, you're getting fat. Like, okay, bitch, what the fuck is the solution? Like, I mean, isn't that an obvious solution? No, it's I'm not. Not to like, maybe okay, like, maybe, maybe you're not. like a yeah, nine-year-old. Yeah. Maybe you're getting a little tubby. Maybe you ate a little too many choco pies. Shout out choco pie, by the way. <laughs> uh, and like, you, you know, you want to be like, what do I do for this? Like, I'm getting fat. What do I do? Hmm. And you're just getting caught fat by your parents. Like, <laughs> it's not helpful, but it is what it is. Uh, before we go to the next one, Jay, you're being too liberal with shout outs. You need to... Choco pie? No. Nah, Choco pie? Choco pie? She shouted she, uh, she out her mom and dad who don't even watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying, are you saying Choco, uh, Choco pie? Parental <laughs> <laughs> shout outs. <laughs> I'm offended. But can you a little closer to the mic? How much closer to no, the mic? No, it's your fine, bro. Oh. <laughs> I'm, Dude, I just want to be, uh, you know, like... <laughs> that is not the same as this mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the article was actually about healing yourself if your parents body shamed you. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's boring. That's okay. Healing I mean, yourself. That's because I, I think go for a run. Daddy. <laughs> like, what? That's, that's exactly what I thought would happen, bro. That's what I was waiting. That's why I picked that article, bro. I saw body shaming, healing. I was like, Jay's gonna hate this. Bro. <laughs> we have a few more. We okay. only run three. Okay. Um, I joined a cult, believing I'd be closer to God. <laughs> then I was castrated. Oh my God! What in the Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> Which cult? It's, I don't know if y'all know this guy. Um, he's now in jail for like murder and rape and stuff. Charles, I do know him. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. MSG, Guru Grams. Oh, no, no, no. He's an Indian. He's like a Indian guy. And he made a movie in 2016 called MSG. Where have you, have, you know what I'm talking about. I was about, allergic right? to MSG as a kid. No, though. MSG stands for <laughs> Messenger okay. of God. Oh. And basically, he was like this superhero. And he became this God man. Yeah. And he had a massive amount of followers. And yeah. Because they didn't want certain people to leave their cult and they, because they were good at something, they would castrate like these these men mm. so that they would just stick around the, the ashram. That's crazy, oh, no. And, and I know this sounds extremely gross and you can cut it out, but apparently this guy uh, thought he would gain virility by castrating other men. And, and then like, eating the... Yeah. 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 Well, they used to do that back in the day with like bulls and stuff, right? Yeah. This is another man. No, no, no. No, definitely. I'm not... Saying and it's, it's 2022. No, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Thoughts? Um, I have. I mean, it's it's cool. Like he said, it's cool. Jay said, yeah, like bull testicles. Yeah, I mean, it's so I mean, normal. I mean, look, 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 I do look, it. look, look, look. <laughs> you you gotta be a special type of person to join a cult in 2023. Okay. So you gotta be someone who accepts all the cookies and all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Don't join a cult. Guys, no, nah. it's so much more easier to. I mean, so much more easier to get fooled into joining a cult nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm serious here. Speaking of which, guys, I'm a level three grand wizard in my <laughs> cult. <laughs> nah, come on. It's like it's so easy to get fa a fall for something nowadays, and you know, with internet and. With it's also that. so much harder to fall for something these days, right? Because you're so aware, and you're aware of these things that happen. Yeah. yeah. No, I There's was really, I was really into cults. Okay, for a while, not into cults. But like interested in yeah. about cults, and they say that only really smart people get into cults. Really? Yeah. That's what they say to the. That's what the other yeah, join the yeah. cults. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, so like you're sitting the there feeling stupid for not being in a cult. And you're just like, <laughs> you know, maybe I want to put some glasses on and join a cult, man. <laughs> it's because only really smart people want to make a big change in the world and feel like they can do it. Yeah. And like all. Or just very egoistical. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another box article. Everyone messes up. Here's how to say you're sorry. It's a study conducted on the best, on the most ideal apology. Like every s apology has six key elements. Nice. Thought? What is the, what, okay, does, does the, the article key? have a conclusion? Yeah, yeah, it does have six uh, elements. Our yeah, question but, is, huh. what is the best way to say sorry? I think over apologizing. I always, really? I always err on the side of over apologizing. I think it's a, it's a problem I have. Yeah. But I've never heard you over. I have never heard. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's something that I struggle with. You know, like I, I just, I just say sorry way too much. He barely, <laughs> he barely under apologized. Literally you. never heard him over apologize. Are you are you serious? I've literally never heard yeah, him never. over apologize. Because I'm really wrong. Now that's no 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I mean, look, I I feel like the the best way to do it is just like uh, 
take accountability. Like, if you have really done something wrong, just take accountability for it and just be like, yo, I fucked up. It's not gonna happen again. Uh, I won't make you join my cult. It's fine. <laughs> like, you know, that's it. Like, I just, I think, like, just take accountability and show that you're sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think you gotta gaslight people. Like, that is the oh, way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that yeah. seems. Clip that. Clip <laughs> that for everywhere, bro. What the fuck? That's going in the expose video. <laughs> Do you all want to know the six? Yeah, like speaking of which, yeah, yeah, blood please. samples from all of you for an HST uh, cult that we're cooking up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll tell you the six points in just say the words sorry or apologize. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, name the in infraction that you're apologizing for. Show that you understand that your actions were harmful. Don't make excuses, but make an explanation. I mean, offer an explanation. Um, say that you won't, that ensure you won't do it again and try to fix what's broken. Do you know what the worst apologies are? The I'm sorry if that offended you. If you yeah. felt bad that's about that, apology. that that's is so yeah, annoying, that's bro. That's not an apology. Yeah, that's like a that's like a that's like more sucks to suck. Essentially, yeah. is what that means. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, yeah. Okay, the last I, last article. one is the superstar going extinct in India, and does Gen Z have something to do with it? Just talking about Bollywood superstars like the Khans or whatever. Yeah, is that cult of like? Yeah, it's you know, done. It's, it's there's done? no more because. I think the superstar like that we used to look up to, the Michael Jacksons and stuff like that, there was this disconnect. There was like, you, you didn't know everything about their lives. Mm -hmm. Now we want to know every fucking thing. We want uh, a musician to have a podcast, to have to vlog. <laughs> to, have a, to have a call. To, like, it's so much expectation. <laughs> yeah. No, but what do you think? No, I agree with you. We've had this conversation so many times and we've literally, it's been like, there's no, uh, there's nothing that separates you anymore from yeah. anything. They're talking about like the Bollywood superstar. Like, you know how you would have like... Okay, the pe the people who used to play like this one role yeah. in most movies really well yeah, and they yeah, only yeah, got yeah. typecast as that And role. everyone's like, oh my God. Like, you know that, like you'd watch a movie just because it's a Shah yeah. movie. Which no, I, think, I, don't, I think that'll happen. Yes, I, I don't yeah. think that that, um, that lens, that courtesy extends to their children. I don't think he's saying that at all. What? I'm saying that. Not his kids, but what the article says is like a uh, Ranbir or a Kartik Aryan or a Vicky Kaushal are not superstars. Mm. Yeah, they're not. Like Salman or Shah Rukh yeah, 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 or, you know, yeah. and so, and they're and blaming. Never reach their yeah. Like, it's not possible to be a superstar. Is Ranbir Singh one? Not no, at that level, bro. He's not on, on Shah Rukh Khan. Like, that's what you yeah. have to compare it to, right? I guess. Yeah, but he's also early on in his career, right? Like, at Shah Rukh at whatever 30 or whatever, wasn't he Shah was, Rukh? I know. He was, dude. Think yeah. about it when you were kids. Like, I knew Shah Rukh Khan. Like, I've always loved him. Yeah. And when we were kids, he was like 40. And he was still a superstar. And he's 50 he's now. 50 he's now, still yeah. a superstar. He's mm. 57, dude. That's wild. Dude is stacked, bro. Yeah. He's banging. Yeah. Pathan, banging movie. Have you ever watched it? No. I was in the theater. I was like cheering for everyone. Anyway. The Rock does that. Like he's a superstar. Yeah. The Rock, the Rock is a very unique kind of superstar. But I guess he's asking Bollywood. No, yeah, so I don't know much about it. That's what it. the article said, which is like, it's not just Bollywood anymore because now people are like, BTS is like the new superstar thing or someone's like a Swifty. They, this is them quoting. This is not me spreading my Taylor Swift or <laughs> Um Or like oh, yeah, it's, a it's, rock. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Indians don't have to be limited to just Bollywood. Yeah. Now you can be like part of the BTS army. Or yeah, I think pop culture has just gotten like wider. So you can be a superstar in... Like KSI is a superstar. Oh yeah. Most people don't know him that's here. That's the new know? generation of superstars. Yeah. The internet sensations right like yeah awesome nice one to end on but uh before we wrap up we want to let you guys know that we do have a new crew member um he's flown in from jaipur to be with us for two weeks and hopefully if things go well he's gonna join us for a month later we're gonna we're gonna keep him a secret for a while but he was sweet enough to bring us a gift Jay, you want to grab that i don't know what he's brought us it's like uh, a famous bakery in oh sick oh shit oh, yeah that's very sweet. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Nice. You want to do a quick taste test? Yeah, go for it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Which is your favorite, bro? We'll try one of them. Yeah, both of them. Okay, let's go for chocolate. And yeah, guys, uh, besides that, I want to let you guys know that I have a new song out and it's been, it's been doing way better than I thought it would. This way, that way. I'm going to link it in the description. Anyone want to plug anything else, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh god. Yeah. You should have had it with our coffee, bro. You should have told us his cookies before. <laughs> you should have introduced him earlier. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs>
Anything else we need to let them know? What? I'm eating, bro. <laughs> Oh damn! They're so good. Mm. I feel like people. We should just let this run. Like we should just fucking. <laughs> <walk in. laughs> just us eating a cookie and saying damn good. Like and subscribe. All that. Share. Follow. <laughs> we also have Instagram. We do Instagram sometimes. Um. <laughs> Ariana, um, you want to shout out something? I was gonna say, can we just discuss how? Adi's song, This Way, That Way, was featured on Diet Sabya three times and how you guys don't know who Diet Sabya is. No, let's not say that because that's not... That is... Let's not say that though. How do you not know? No, so... Um, so this... I was messaging the guy who handles you Diet Sabya. Yeah? Oh, or one person or multiple. I don't know who it is. Whatever it is, I was messaging them Whoever. on social media and I posted a story of like people responding to the song, right? Being like, oh, this is a banger, this is a banger. And they were like, Oh, I wonder who influenced this. I was like, you chill. I have fans as well, and they just fucking put a cap emoji and ruined my life, bro. No, they were like, you know, like that's <laughs> the, that's that's why it was so cool is because it was organic. Yeah, and a lot of people would pay a lot, a lot, a lot of money to get a spot like that. Yeah, yeah. for them to post or whatever. I and mean, that's how these pages do it, right? Yeah, guys, so I got to talk like, about a transaction I made through the HST account. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> a friend, of, a friend of mine called me, and she was like, yeah. dude. Adi got featured on this uh, this page. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have yeah. any idea how much they charge for that? Yeah, dude. No, I like, I like literally. I'm telling yeah. you, people texted me telling me that this is whack. Like I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't know who that was, but that was whack. Adi, I think this is the time to. So good job, man. Yeah, good job. And, Let's and, go. Good job. Thank you guys. If uh, this Let's song, yet, I'll, I mean, I'll copyright song. claim it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say everything is really working out for you. Like your stars are really aligning. No, we were cutting before that. Baby girl, I like how you move it. Tarantino vibe, make a movie. I'm sick of the twisting and grooving. Turn around and put your hips into it. Face so cute, put the ass on rolling.